the first few hours out of prison, you actually want to turn around and go back in. You're thinking, where am I going to sleep tonight? What am I going to eat? It's very frightening. It's like free falling. I know people skydive all the time, and you free fall for a while. But you do have a parachute that catches you and lands you safely on the ground. Ex-felons coming out of prison, some of them don't have that parachute. Some of them don't have family. They don't have support. When I was released from prison on parole, after having a life sentence, I found it very hard, if not absolutely impossible, to find a job. You feel lost. You feel left out. It don't matter how much time you do. Once you in the system, it's hard for them to let you go because to them, you just, you ain't gonna do right. If they don't give you an opportunity to do right, if there's no doors for you to go in to help better yourself, then all you know is the streets. All you know is to go back to the life that you knew how to survive. In. You know, it's one thing to do something wrong and to, to pay for it. You do your time and you pay for it. But in today's society, that's just not how it is. Even after you have served your time on your sentence, you come out and you're still serving time. People seem to socially incarcerate us. It's kind of like we're disposable and we're not disposable. They're human too. You know, you, you don't know what situation they may have been in. What he has in his background that made him do what he's doing now. We're still good people. We're just doing the wrong things. You got to recognize people when they want to do the right thing. You got to recognize people when they want to turn their life around. I mean, because anyone is capable of turning their life around. You know, all of us are. But there has to be a support system in the community that aids that effort, that helps that effort. You got to begin to sit around the round table to figure out better ways of addressing crime other than incarceration. rest rate or recidivism rate for formerly incarcerated persons is generally very high across the nation. For those who are released from prison, one third go back to prison within the first six months and at the three year mark it's two out of three or 67 percent. Law enforcement is far more than just enforcing law. Our mission is not to see how many people we can arrest. Our mission is to make the community safe. We understand that we have to do something different today if we want a different result tomorrow. We found generally that returning citizens have to have a job, drugs treatments, and a place to stay. But jobs are a huge indicator of whether or not someone will succeed. There's a huge labor pool that's there. If we can just figure out how to take them from being incarcerated and really get them trained and get them jobs, so I really focused on building a collaborative program, helping people find jobs and support for people trying to get on the right path. We made the proposition that if you can keep these guys off the street, um, stop selling drugs, stop using drugs, get a job, be a father to your children, and we will help you. I was approached by the chief and he asked me, what did I think about this program of giving these nonviolent drug dealers a second chance? And I was willing to try it. Sounded like a great idea. The participants were told, you have to get off drugs. You have to stop selling drugs. They have to get their GED if they don't have one. And they have to maintain a job, as well as monthly meetings with the community panel. The community panel, is some community members, some ministers, some businessmen. We look at street level drug dealers in our community, providing them with drug treatment if needed, job placement assistance with employment partners, and offer any kind of input or assistance that we can. The first meeting that we had, I was quite struck by their response. Each of them said, I learned how to live in the streets. And the fact that I have so many people of character in this community 
willing to take the time to invest in me, to show me the right way, I'm in. The word got out and they say, you know what? I'm going to seize this opportunity. I'm going to see what these people are talking about. I used to be out in the streets. I knew that wasn't my life, but I just didn't know how to get on track. Once you learn to accept the decisions that you make, it's a lot easier, because then you stop blaming others for something that you decide to do. Some people say they can do it on their own, but to have help and see that someone cares and, and shows you that, well, we love you. We want you to do better. We want to see you do better. You've got a team of people here that believe in you and care about you. And if you have an issue, you're going to call on us, and we're going to figure the issue out and help you solve it. And with the program, you know, once you get in trouble once again, they have options to work with you or put you out of the program. You know, so I wanted to correct everything that I had going wrong in my life. Not for them, but for me. For people to be able to come out, stuff have to change. You have to be the one that wants to make that correct change in your life. You gotta have to step up to the plate and do it yourself. Because if you got yourself in there, it's gonna take you to get yourself out of it. This has been a really big change for me. We don't just give up, you know, because they make another mistake. We try to counsel with them and find out why did they make the mistake and what's the purpose of it and, and seeing if we can do something different from what we're doing or something better than what we're doing. It really was a collaborative action to, to have the community panel and the police work together to try to solve problems in our community. What we saw at the end of a year was a 400% reduction in narcotics crimes and a 42% reduction in other serious crimes. And the community panel felt in many ways that they were taking their community back. I think that each of us in each community, if we would do our part and be sincere about it, we'd have less problems. But it all takes uh, love and compassion. Juanita and I formed the Cut Above the Rest Training Facility to try to give back to the inmates that were coming out after us. We know what they have gone through. They know what we've gone through. They are our brothers and sisters. What we do is train these people in construction because I wanted to give them something that would help them stand out. It helps them get jobs, really good paying jobs. It meant a lot to me to be able to give back and to help others. Did we ever stop and take the time to learn to see each other from the other person's perspective? I believe that what we'll see is that we are far more alike than we are different. And I think that we will see that myths will give way to facts, suspicion will give way to trust, and anger and hate will give way to love and respect. Genuine discourse builds relationship. And those you have relationship with, you don't trample on, you don't trash. The oldest guy in our first class was 40. In his mind, he felt like he was gonna be, he was gonna sell drugs forever, because that's all he knew. Now this guy's working two jobs. And he came to me and said, you know what? I got a W-2 today. I'm 40 years old and I got my first W-2 form. I filled out. I realized, well, hey, it's a better way to do things than to be out poisoning the community. I feel like I'm worth more to my community the way I am now than the way I was then. I wasn't a full-time father, so I had to make the options of, of saying, well, hey, do I continue to do what I was doing or do I get my family back? And I chose to get my family back. It just made me feel uh, <clears throat> like I'm a part of society again, you know? It makes it worthwhile to be able to see these people say, hey, Miss Pitts, I got a job. I had one tell me just today, Miss Pitts, I got a job. I said, you did? He said, Miss Pitts, I hadn't worked in 17 years. It's a, it's a feeling of, of bliss almost. When you know that you've helped someone to achieve something that they felt impossible, I often tell my students, 
Don't look where I came from. Watch where I'm going. You know, life's about new beginnings. It's not about the past. To help people like me to get another, a second chance at life. You know, I'm 55 years old, but I feel like I'm about 18, you know, and, and, and life is just so new to me right now. That's what it's about. It's, it's, it's one person at a time making a difference in the lives of other people. Because at the end, it's all about people. Taking chances on people.